me. I, I'm, I'm ready. Everybody ready? Do re mi fa sol la ti Or is it still Wednesdays? Wednesdays. Okay. That's disgusting. I forget you guys can hear things because it's like right here. Nah, that's disgusting. I can hear that. <laughs> was it really clear? Yeah, and then you what just you... swallow. That was, yeah. You heard the swallow? Yeah. No, I gargled a little bit. <laughs> oh, you're disrespectful. You're disrespectful. <laughs> nah, don't do that. Drink healthy, everybody. Drink healthy. Uh, we can go ahead and get started. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Applicable Signs, our first recording. Uh, so give it up for it, give it up for it, give it up for it. First one, uh, we got myself. My name is Christopher Small. I'm a graduating senior electrical engineering major from Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, everyone. My name is Amanda Harvey. I am a junior psychic molecular biology major from Woolwich, New Jersey. And last but not least, my name is Chauncey Upshur. I am a junior computer engineering major from Laura, Maryland. And together we are Applicable Science Podcast, where we are applying science and STEM, princip well, STEM principles and concepts and, and trying to solve our daily lives with those. So how are you guys doing today? Stupendous. Just woke up from that, so I'm feeling all right. You said what, Chauncey? I just woke up from that. I was oh, thinking, all right. bro, I did too. I'm not going to hold you. <laughs> I started that Zoom at 629. I was asleep. I was asleep until like 625. <laughs> Crazy, I, 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 was, I was telling my, um, I was telling Siri to uh, go ahead and put the alarm off, but nothing happened. Man, I'm telling you, Siri, Siri going to be one of our conversations like later on, applying Siri uh, professionally because Siri is trash. I like Google way more than Siri. Siri like Siri's like that cousin that you have to love, but you don't really like them like that. Like you could love somebody but not like them. They're they're that person. Hmm. I like Siri. It does it does what it do. It just be stalking me sometimes. Or Siri's like that one of those cousins where your mom says you have to make friends with them because that's your family, but really you just like Okay, I mean, and then try to ditch him at any possible. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a little brother, a little sibling that you have to take to the mall with you. Like mom said, you got to take me. Oh my! <laughs> right, ready to punch a, ready to punch a uh, wall. Yeah, facts, facts. <laughs> oh, I need those. I need those side effects. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So let's head and get into the first STEM concept of applicable science, which is reproductive isolation. So uh, we have Amanda, who is a molecular and cellular biology major. Did I say that right? Cellular and molecular. <laughs> okay, so I flipped it. Um, yeah. But she has some expertise in this. Uh, so you can go ahead and tell the audience what reproductive isolation is. Okay, so reproductive isolation is when you will there's two types. So there's prezygotic and postzygotic. So we'll be looking at prezygotic. And there's four main types, which are behavioral, geographical, temporal, and what's the other one? Something in my mind. Mechanical. Mechanical. Okay. So you have those four. So pretty much it's like pre things into like when two species mate. So, like, pre-things that um, can get in the way of the meeting. So, one of them is temporal isolation. So, it's, like, <laughs> when two species just, like, different timings. So, like, one might mate in the spring, one might mate in the winter. So, with that, their mating times are different. Or if you have behavioral isolation, so some animals, like, you know, a peacock with the beautiful feathers. So, they'll choose whichever one has the best feathers. Or different... Animals have different mating calls, things like that. So that can get in the way of different species mating. Another one, mechanical, is like when the parts don't fit. So say if you have an elephant trying to have sex with a fish, that's, <laughs> that's just not working out. So 
and then you have geographical. So if one person's on one con one animal's on one continent, the other one's on the other, they ain't gonna link up. So all this has to do with speciation. So if you see like a species, like you see two species on two continents, but they're the same exact species, but they look completely different. That's because you have different factors that like lead to speciation, like I just said, like with those four types. So yeah. Shoot. Like when did you when did you learn about reproductive isolation in class? In AP bio of senior oh, so year. High school. So high school. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it just gets brought up because it's just basic biology. Fall asleep at. What'd you say, Chauncey? One of the one of the classes that you fall asleep in. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. Uh -uh. That's, one, that's one of the classes <laughs> that you you uh purposely dismiss. Like you don't try to put on your schedule. It's fun. <laughs> Biology is like, yeah, respect to all the biologists that are listening to this and watching it on YouTube or however. Um, but yeah, biology, y'all have all my respect because I could not stay up for that class. No, <laughs> just all science classes in general, chemistry included. Cause oh, your favorite, your favorite course. Don't get me started. Don't you want to, you want to tell the audience about your favorite course, Chauncey? Chris, don't get me started. On chemistry. It's going to, it's going to come up one day. Chemistry is i'm sorry for everybody who are majors out there but chemistry gotta be one of the worst and i mean worst classes i've ever been to in my life <laughs> it's not exaggeration at all it's fine orgo gives me ptsd so <laughs> you and everyone else that has to take orgo across the nation <laughs> has ptsd because of orgo yeah. i see little little figures and i'm like I was like, I shake on the inside, like, like mm -mm. <laughs> you know, I, have, I have PTSD because of probability and statistics. Like, that class gave me nightmares, and I'll be, I'll be stressing just trying to go to class. Like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> I have to go through another day when I don't even know what's going on. Hmm. Like, yo. Um, so, the reflection point that we're going to uh, try to merge with reproductive isolation is, Everyone's not meant to be together, um, whether it's different time zones, um, locations, gender, race, uh, not so much race, but just different factors that come along with it. Which begs a question, do y'all believe in soulmates? That's a great, that's a great question. I, I personally, like, let's get me wrong, in the beginning, I used to be all for soulmates, but as I experienced the world more and more, I'm starting to lose lose belief. See, my take on that is I believe there's someone out there for everyone. So I'm kind of like a hopeless romantic, uh, so to speak. I believe there's everyone out there, someone out there for them. Now that person is not perfect. They come with some baggage as you would too. Um, but that's that's when you have to get away from the different isolations. Uh so whether it be location, um time, so different work schedules for people. Um, so maybe you're an entrepreneur, you're always on the go traveling, and then this person is uh staying in one city, doesn't do um outdoors or different entertainment they just go to work uh go home and just be content and doing that which is perfectly fine um that's probably that's probably how i would probably be living um later on uh, but that's just one thing that i would say um i do believe there's a soulmate multiple soulmates how do you guys feel about that uh can you have that's, more than one that's how i feel i feel like even though everyone hopes there's just one single person out there, I feel like there's multiple people who you can really connect with. And I feel like there's multiple people who could be your soulmate. Because to say that there's one specific person out there, it just doesn't... Because there's so many people who live long, happy lives. And they'll be like, oh, this is my soulmate. But I feel like multiple people can fill that void. So like, I don't necessarily believe in soul soulmates like that. But like at the same time, I feel like there's multiple people who can be that person and like that your your whole entire self and like that one person those people who would be willing to sacrifice yourself for and like adapt and stuff like that but those people are, those people are hard to come by though so like you oh, have, they have to be 
I believe that everything is meant to be. Everything is, that's a time and a place for everything. It's not a coincidence or luck or anything like that. Um, but you have to just recognize that in like first, firsthand, uh, you have to recognize this person might be the one for you and not be persuaded by like outside distractions or something like that and just be willing to work at it. Um, Cause I think people aren't willing to work at it. Um, and that's mm -hmm. when, that's when a behavior isolation comes into play. Um, they just want to, they just want to go out, have fun, meet a different people, have fun, have a good time. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here for a long time, but a good time or something to that fact. I think I'm messing it up. But, uh, you got the gist. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that behavioral aspect is just very key and people don't want that until later on down the line when that person might already meet, like Amanda said, another, another soulmate that was meant for them, but you just missed out. Exactly. Cause I feel like, I feel like, you know, being a female, you know, in college, you see a lot of different people on different wave patterns. And that's, that's a hundred percent behavioral isolation. Like some people are, are like, Marry, I'm mean, not marrying, but dating to marry. Some people are here for the games, and you know that's where we get the saying that Negroes ain't. Y'all know, <laughs> <laughs> everybody know. <laughs> yeah, but in in the, uh, in very unexplicit terms, dudes are not what you want. No, <laughs> I think you could find the explicit version of that if you just look up your favorite female artist at this point. But at the same time, you know, some females, they've been playing games, too. Oh, I won't, I won't. oh yeah, it's, def <laughs> it's definitely double-sided, but it's definitely pushed out. That is one yeah. side. But, yeah, being, I see there's so many different behaviors, but it's also finding that person who's on the same, like, level as you and the same maturity and wants the same things as you. And I feel like that's how you get past that barrier. I'm stuck on the part where you say there's multiple soulmates. You don't believe it's multiple people? No. How come? I, so, you're trying to tell me that, okay, there is a soulmate for you, right? There's this mm -hmm. person who matches your vibes, who, you know, of course had some baggages, but you had some baggages, and then you're just combined, and, like, it's not, like, I wouldn't say... It's just, it's your ideal um, person, right? Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't fathom that there's more than one person that can fit the bill. So, so let me ask you this. What is your bill? So what are you basing this off of? Are you basing this off of um, physical appearance? How this girl or a uh, male Everything. is looking? Oh, well. Like, there could be multiple girls that fit your physical bill, and then there could be multiple people that fit, fit your psychological bill. But not all, not even out of that group of people who fits one of those two bills, there's really, I really can't say that there's more than one person who fits both bills, and then it's just like, like, when you have that, when you first meet the person, and you're like, wow, that, like, I can see that being my wife, and you didn't even know we're like that. So this person got to get through all these different isolation barriers, uh, whether it be temporal, uh, uh, behavioral, um, mechanical, and you think there's only one person, so this is going to be the last woman standing for you? And then, like, just think about it, because, like, a lot of people are more... You have to think about it. This is definitely not 20 years ago. That's social, for sure. Yeah, social media is taking this world by storm. Yeah, that's a, uh, so, that's a geological barrier. That's a mm -hmm. major one right now because quarantine and all everyone um staying locked down. No, no, no. Um, I, we can go into that, but not even <laughs> that. I'm talking about like people um can be swayed by like little things, especially on social media. Like for example, I could, I could go on Inst I can go on Twitter, right? Although I'm a college to it, and although I am, let's say, a little young, I could compare myself to a person like Zion Wilson. Zion is, what, a year or two younger, year or two um, younger than me? I could easily be swayed and say, oh, how come he has millions of dollars already and I haven't even got out of school? 
now although i have you know although i have like things down the line and things that will set me up later on so like i can catch up I, people can just get easily swayed and like their like mindset can just be completely shut down just for a simple fact that i'm comparing myself to somebody else when their circumstances could be different than uh, than mine well you got to realize different people are on this world for different reasons so you might be on this earth uh maybe to be a lawyer or engineer or or just maybe electrician or janitorial person, which is a good career. I'm not knocking it at all. Um, or to be a teacher, a principal, politician, whatever it be. You don't have to be a, a, a athlete. Um, so if you're comparing yourself to athletes, you're gonna be doing that till you till you're blue in the face until the the ball stops dribbling on the NBA court or the NFL pass to stop throwing or MLB uh stop throwing pitches like you're gonna be doing that to the end of time which is not gonna make make you happy it's only gonna make you miserable at the end of the day so if you just comparing yourself what's the point but if you find out what you're meant to be in your passion i think you're gonna stop comparing yourself immediately like it's gonna be instant and you're gonna start to try to find mentors and people that actually want to do what you want to do and start getting help with that and start constructing it in a positive way and then later on once you start monetizing it it won't feel like work. It feel like career. It feel like I'm doing something that I love. I'm getting money for it. I can't get I can't get mad because Zion just dropped 35 and got 200 million dollar contract for five years because I'm doing what I love. I don't. Maybe I'm not in his position. You don't know what he's doing in the background, uh, like behind the scenes when he's not playing for those 48 minutes. You don't know what he's doing. He's going through maybe trials and tribulations with his family because they see him as a cash cow now. They People, his friends, see him as an ATM machine. He has, he got people coming at him with different investment opportunities that he might risk his money on and lose everything. Like, it's pro athlete lifestyle. I'm not a pro athlete by any stretch of the imagination. I stopped high school, and I'm glad I stopped high school. But at the same breath, we don't know what the struggles are behind the scenes for them athletes. I mean, LeBron makes this look so easy, but LeBron's been doing this for 20 years. Well, he's been doing it for almost 20 years now, and he's he still probably – he probably has a good hold on how to do it correct and do it efficiently. But for the modern rookie, sophomore, however many years you're in your professional sport, it's there's going to be some trials and tribulations and some rocky roads. So – Yeah. Let me oh, – uh, uh, this could ask um, – this could go to both of y'all. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in fate? Yes. So you think that everyone has a role in play and everything? I mean, I believe it too. I'm just asking. Like, do you believe like everything happens for a reason and not like everything that is happening in your life and everything that's going to happen is just fixed. So like it's going to happen whether you like it or not. And... Uh so I don't think everything is fixed. I think you have certain things in your life that are meant for you. But I feel like there's also like people's decisions and things that they go that also lead them down certain paths. So I don't think that everyone, everything, yeah, I don't think everything is fixed. And also I believe that everyone does have a role to play in this universe and everyone's gonna have a contribution to society. It just depends on your decisions. And if you act so, Everyone has a perfect purpose and everybody has a fate, but not everyone lives up to their full potential based on external factors as well. So I feel like um, everyone has a role to play on society, but not everyone has a big impact as they could have in the future. It's like just depending on, you know, um, nature versus nurture, decisions, everything like that. So I feel like fate is, but fate is very prominent in society. Just by seeing how my life turned out and seeing how other people's lives were impacted by fate, it's just evident that some things in life are just supposed to happen. Like, well, it's supposed to happen if you let it happen. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with Amanda on that one. But I feel like there's fate. Um, bigger decisions have more weight on your life than those small ones like what you eat today. Uh, well, now that I think about it, 
what you eat today would probably impact you in the next 10 years if you keep doing it. Um, but just everyday different items, um, I don't think they have a major impact as far as like where you go to school, um, money, financial situations, stuff like that, major economical and social impacts. Um, but then I also think of everything is already predetermined because of deja vu moments. So I'm not really versed in what deja vu really is as scientifically, uh, but you can't tell me everything is not already set in stone if I keep picturing it in my dreams and it comes to fruition and it's like, oh, oh my gosh, I've seen this before. Like, like how does how does that happen? Like it's, it has to be some someone already written. You're just watching the movie at this point. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Or I know this another side note is like some people believe in past lives and like them experiencing things that you've already experienced. So like their memories are coming back to you. I know that's another thing with deja vu. Yeah, that's I believe in past lives. Oh yeah. I don't have an opinion on past lives. I don't know if Me either. I, yeah, I don't know if I should believe it or um try to dig into it. Like I'm I'm just neutral on that one. Yeah, I feel like it's very possible, but I don't know too much about it to say I believe in it or not. Yeah. It's very like, like opinionated. Yeah, like reincarnation. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Mm. I so, believe we've been in heaven, but I don't believe in past lives. Oh, I do too. Heaven and hell. Yeah, I believe yeah. in that. Oh, well, there is a, there is, there's definitely, <laughs> there's definitely a hell. Yo, that thing is burning right now, boy. Oh, yeah, there's definitely a hell. I, I'm, it's definitely a heaven, definitely a hell, so. Yo, it's definitely easier to get cold, I mean, to get warm from being cold than to get a cold from being warm. Like, hot versus cold, oh my gosh, just take me to heaven right now. I don't, I don't want it, I don't want to be in hell with everybody else. <laughs> And we doing a two step, and it's all sweaty and muggy and stuff. My dad tells me people in hell want ice water. <laughs> <laughs> Why do people in heaven are drinking the ice water? Nah, y'all, y'all completely wrong. <laughs> but yeah, so back to let's go back to the isolations. I was thinking about geographical isolations because it was brought up earlier. What do you guys think about um, dating long distance? Oh, it has, hmm, can't work. Not necessarily, like, you have to have the financial, uh, the financial situation to make it work. Okay, let's just, let's just baseline this. What is long distance relationship? Is it more than an hour away? Is it two hours? Uh, what is the baseline? Honestly, I think anything, if, Anything that is not driving distance is long is long distance. So yeah, but everything I is drivable. Drive from here to Hampton, right? Here That's drivable. It's a good. It's a good three hours. Which is where? Which is where for the audience? Is Maryland? Okay. I Hampton, Virginia. I, everyone, Hampton, Virginia. We didn't <laughs> notice that we were saying it now. Hampton, Virginia. Our home by the sea. Our home by the sea. <laughs> we all attend Hampton University. Shameless plug of uh, 40 million coming our way. Still don't know what they're going to do with that. Hopefully, they use it for good and not for just some random. Uh, we, we're just going to leave that conversation now. Go back to you, Chauncey. We love him too. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I like, I honestly think like three hours, okay, I can see myself. No, actually, I really can't see myself. I mean, maybe if I'm a truly in love, quote, I will go out and... Quote? Quote on love? Huh? Quote on love? If I am truly in love, quote, I will, I guess I'll make the trip out three hours. But I think anything bigger than three hours is like long distance relationship. I feel like it's when you're not able to see somebody consistently. Like, you have to, like, say, I guess in a relationship, like, you guys aren't, like, too, too serious. But, like, say if you see them, like, once a week, hang out, this and that. Like, that's regular. But, like, if you can't see somebody weeks on end, like, it goes months. 
and you have to be more virtual than you are in person, that's more long distance. Not so much distance, because I feel like if I was in a serious relationship, I would make the drive and like things like that. So I don't think it really depends on distance, because people are going to find ways to get places if they really, you know, yeah. want stuff or are in love. So. But I can always, <laughs> I can always hit back at you with that statement, because you could say, you say if if things are virtual. For example, during this coronavirus, I could be literally down the street from you. But since it's virtual and the coronavirus, I mean. But that's not long distance, though. That's just some. I'm just uh, saying, I'm just pointing out technicality. I feel like eh, that's, that's more of like a life or death kind of thing rather yeah, than like safety. I don't think COVID-19 has that much like that. It constitutes a long distance relationship. That's just a circum. That's just circumstances of nature and uh, misfortune just happening upon everyone. So if you can't see somebody right now, it might be because of long distance, or it might be because you can't because you have to quarantine, or somebody caught it. One of your, your spouse or your loved one caught it, and you they have to stay in their house for fourteen days. But you don't want to catch it either. Uh, but you still love them. Then like an hour away if you're in LA or something or New York. So I don't think COVID-19 has that one. But I feel like it does have the effect on people who are like college relationships who live too far away from each other in their home. That may, And then COVID adds more time. I'm like, mm-mm, that's I mean, bad for y'all. <laughs> I mean, that's when you go back home and then you talk to your home girlfriend and then you come back and wait for her to come <laughs> to with your, your campus girlfriend. That's what you gotta have two in the stash. I'm, uh, uh. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. No, um, for no, 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 purposes, no, 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 call, no, no, Mr. no, no, Christopher Small, no, no, Mr. B. And if you, Charles, you want to tell the audience what the B stands for? I can't hmm? say that because say it with I, your chest. I, yeah, say it with your chest. Tell the I, audience what the B stands for. Well, I don't curse, so it's not gonna happen. All right, so stop using it. I'm pre- no, no, I will. I'd rather be, but. I'm pretty sure our audience knows what Mr. B is, especially if it relates to girls. Oh, uh, we just lost. We just lost half our audience because of that statement right there. <laughs> ain't ain't what? <laughs> Shout out to all the listeners and the viewers. We really appreciate it. Uh, we're gonna keep making more content. Uh, just sharing this club, but thank you for viewing it. Female empowerment. Oh yeah, the female empowerment. I'm all the way with it. All support. Yeah. All support. Chauncey? I'll, I'll support. <laughs> Calling people Mr. B. <laughs> whoa, whoa. But, yeah. So, so how do, you, how do y'all got, uh, how do I want to ask, ask this question? So what about friendships? How does um, rep- reproductive isolation work for friendships, you think? I feel like, okay, so think of, I'm thinking about how COVID impacts some of my friendships. I feel like it can strengthen or weaken them. So, like, think about geographical. Um, it causes you, say if you're not seeing your friends every day, it causes you to go out your way and speak to them. Or, like, if, you're, if you don't want to stay in the house and, you know, feel lonely and things like that, you have to reach out to your friends, to the ones who talk to you. That can also strengthen their relationships. And then, but also yeah. the ones who you don't communicate with, it also weakens it. Yeah, it just shows you. I guess it just shows you who your real friends are. Mm-hmm. Your thoughts on it, Chauncey? Mm, honestly. And if you think about it, um, if you're a military kid, you're temporal, so not temporal, but uh, geological you're moving around like every year, every three years, every four years because of your parent. So that like making friends, that's a different isolation. Um, that's a different barrier that you have to go through. That's just, you just gotta be able to make quick friends on your feet and hopefully they last a lifetime with internet and technology now. I mean, yeah, it's a lot different now because of technology. So you can always um, be able to contact them with through social media um and like you can always grab their number before you end up leaving and like the good friends but um 
and then hopefully like when you go to school or like college and you can be like a little bit independent you can like try to say meet up with your friends uh contact people you know etc yeah that's fair but a true friend will stick with you by your side forever. Yo, that reminds me of Toy Story. I've been watching that for um, since we've been in quarantine. That's my. That's literally my favorite franchise. Like that, Toy Story is my favorite franchise. Uh, mm-hmm. I think Toy Story Two is the best Toy Story by far. Mm-mm. Whoa! What's Toy Story Two? Toy Story Actually. One is with Sid, the next door neighbor. Toy Story 2 is with, um, they meet Bullseye and, um, dang, what is the cowgirl name? Jesse. Yeah, Jesse. Uh, and the old witch, um, dude, the fat guy that they dropped off at the airport or got snatched away by the little girl. Oh, so that's number two. Number three is when they went to the daycare of Wolazzo and the big fluffy bear. Oh, he is the, buff, the fluffy bear. <laughs> And then number four is when they, um, they meet. Say goodbye Forky. to Woody. Yeah, say goodbye to Woody, and they have Forky now, the homemade toy from um the little girls. Mm-hmm. No, definitely the fourth one was the worst one by far. It's still hit though. I ain't gonna lie. It's no. still I went. I went to the movie theater to see that by myself. Me too. I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> It was all about Woody and not the toys. But if you think about it, each movie was about Woody. Like, the first movie was about Woody being jealous because of Buzz. Mm -hmm. The the second movie was about um, Woody not wanting to, or Woody being undecided on what he wants to do with the rest of his toy life. Mm -hmm. That just sounds weird to me. His toy life. Uh, Whether he wants to go to Japan and live in a box or go back to Andy with the rest of them. Mm-hmm. And the third one was about Woody trying to save the day, um, trying to prove that he was right, which he ended up was was being right, but he was just trying to mm-hmm. be like his ego got in the way a lot of the times, to be honest. Yeah. Either way, that um either way about Toy Story, it is not one of the best kids movies ever, so it don't even matter to me. What? It's not. It's one it's maybe it's like top ten, but it's not top five. Give me the give me the five. Give me the five before we stop. Oh, so you're taking time to do this? Okay. Now nah, give me the five. You, five. Cause you disrespected my my franchise. Pixar is definitely gonna hit we us. Got, we, well, we got it. Monsters in there. So mm-hmm. Monsters University, Monsters Inc. Monsters Inc. Not you Monsters literally Inc. have two Monsters. movies. Two movies. That's it. In the I'm same talking movie. about the single movie, Monsters Inc. I'm okay. not talking about Monsters University. I'm putting up. Monster I'm University was trash. I'm putting up Toy Story 2 against Monsters, Inc. Monsters, Inc. Uh, You're, mm, I, but I, but I like Toy Story 3 better. That's my favorite one. So, you got Monsters, Inc. Then you have Mr. I mean, the Incredibles. That should be up for no debate. Oh, no. I'm agreeing with you. I watched that, too. <laughs> okay. I watched both of them. That's, that's straight. Wait. Side note, before Chauncey gives us the other three. Do y'all know how good Pixar's animation have been over the years? Yo, when I visit them, mm-hmm. when I visit them, movies that they're responsible for. So. Yo, they made bangers after bangers after bangers. Like when I went to visit them uh, in California, my sophomore year, uh, they showed us how they made, you know, Coco, the movie Coco. Yeah, I, I, I have yet Street to watch. Fire. It's so mm-hmm. good. They showed us. They showed us the physics behind how they made the little um the bridge to the death, the death bridge. You know, uh, mm-hmm. with all the what was it? People that were like on the bridge, or how? Who? What? What was on the bridge? They were dead people. Okay. They yeah. get to like they get to cross over from like the dead into like see their families and stuff. Yeah, but I was just wondering. I was trying to remember what the bridge was actually made out of. So. I'm I think. Not sure. I think no, no, no. It was leaves. I think it was leaves or something to that effect. Like how they made it, how they use the physics is, is crazy. Like if I get the opportunity to work at Pixar one day, bye bye astronaut. I'm going to work for Pixar. <laughs> I want to see you be an astronaut. Oh yeah, for all the audience out there, I'm an aspiring astronaut. 
uh, NASA astronaut to be exact. If you have any connects, hit me up, please. Uh, well, back to you, black John. astronaut. <laughs> a what? A black astronaut. A black astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I didn't let you slip, Chauncey. Give me them other three. Okay. First one. First one I, well, we gotta get Lion King out the way. All right. Okay. That's a what? Oh, that's a I can't believe. No, no, no. I'm agreeing with you. That's a cheat code. But go ahead. I'm. I'm. <laughs> I can't. I can't debate you on Lion King. Wait, the the original, not the new. The one. original. The original. Mm -hmm. Um, I like Shrek. All right, that's why I lost you. Stop it. Shrek? <laughs> that's not better than Toy Story. Buzz Lightyear is getting Donkey out of here. Stop it. Woody, Shrek is in top 10, but... <laughs> Woody cannot touch Shrek. I mean, Shrek cannot touch Woody. Like, stop it. Also, I think Coco is up there. You mentioned Coco, that. Coco only has one movie, though. Oh, yeah. Are we talking about franchise? If you're talking about movies, though. I think we were talking about franchises. But no, I said movies. Movies? All right. Coco's up there. I'm gonna give you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just go ahead and argue the Toy Story one. So that's the original. You can't touch that, really. But Toy Story is definitely top five. You can't. There's no way you're getting Toy Story out of here. I gave you. I gave you Lion King. I gave you uh, The Incredibles, the first one. I gave you. What else did I give you? What other movies did you say? I'm not giving you Shrek. What about Ratatouille? <laughs> that's my movie. See, Ratatouille ain't replayable though. Oh, I watch it all the time. To me, that's not replayable. What about Finding Nemo, then? Yeah. Okay. I'll, How did I feel about Finding Dory? I never watched it. I didn't even watch it because I knew that was going to be terrible. Because <laughs> Finding Nemo isn't that replayable to me. Uh, I mean, yeah. I watched that too. It was cool. Finding Dory was cool. I watched that up. Uh, I think I watched that with some friends. I went to go see that, but that was straight too. Like, mm -hmm. I like all the Pixar movies. They just put me in my, my black boy joy. <laughs> but Monsters Inc. Fire. No, no, Monsters Inc. is not, no, not top five. Mike Wazowski. That's kind of crazy. But yeah, you know. Just like movies are for everyone, everybody's not for everyone. And that's, ah. a, that's a great segue. Look at that shot. Look at that. She tried to, mm -mm. <laughs> cash. And um, that's where we'll end it. Thank you guys. Thank you for the viewers. Thank you for the listeners uh, to our first episode um, focusing on reproductive isolation and connecting point. Or it's everyone's not to be, meant to be together. Um, tune in for our next episode and follow us on our IG at applicable underscore science. Um, tell everyone where they can find you guys' um, handles and different things like that. Uh, Amanda, you can go ahead and start. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It is at Munda55. Munda has two A's, so M O O N D A A 55. And I also have a business shout out. It is called AVH Organics, and you can look it up. On Instagram as AVH Organics. Black business yeah. alert. Black business alert. Stay alert. <laughs> Johnson, do you have a handle? I don't use social media no more, so I don't. Oh, that is an upcoming topic. Please be on the lookout for that topic. We're going to get right into it with that. Uh, but you can follow me, uh, Chris, at tallboy underscore Chris. A.K.A. Mr. B. No, mm. no. That's not what my bio says, so get it correctly. He is AKA Reform Thug. <laughs> I'm not a thug. That, you will not use that card on me. I'm a black man in America. Amen. <laughs> Period. Let him know. <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram, uh, tallboy underscore Chris, and follow us on YouTube at Applicable Science Podcast. Um, thank you for the viewers and have a blessed day. Bye. Peace. Until next time.